bed said I'd be sleeping with my mouth open. I told her she better relax. She better stop going crazy <laughs> over me like that. Dang, wild, bro. That's wild. You know what's wild? These mics is on. Damn! Oh, no. <laughs> Back at it again, so God's best, so you know what time it is. <laughs> hey, I got the main man Juice with me in the building. Always. Hey, you know what time it is. We are going through the top 10, our top 10 storylines of the year, 2023. Uh, Fast year, man. 2023 came, saw it, conquered. Bro, sorry, bro. I ain't gonna no, I'm just saying I that. Put that. Nah, you just, it just, <laughs> you turned up. You a professional, nigga. I said, God damn, nigga. Hey, you kind of got me. Let me. Okay, hey, okay, I, okay, I, I okay. Play with y'all, man. Okay, yeah, shit. Tell me what the fuck going on there. Turn me up. 2023 storylines got me. Carrie Forson in the building. It is I. Uh, Ricardo, we missing you, bro. Wherever you is, whatever you got going. He was supposed Shout to out to my business. boy, Shout Cannon, out. man. But uh, let's get into it. Number one storyline of 2023 for us, uh, the Sports Illustrated Sports Person of the Year, Deion Sanders Prime, taking his talents from Jackson State to Colorado. Uh, Prime, uh, of course, you know, Colorado didn't win too many games this year. But man, what a moment that was in 2023. Yes. The whole world's eyes were on Colorado, Boulder, Boulder, Colorado for football season. This is something that we've never seen before. Rappers, Offset, Lil Wayne, Snoop, everybody was in attendance for Deion Sanders. And then they started the year off with the biggest upset of the year TCU, who just came off a national championship game. Prime, all these transfers come in, mm-hmm. go down into Fort Worth, Texas, kick TCU's ass. Uh, and win that game by three, and now the whole world was watching and believing, man. What was what was the biggest takeaway from you from Prime this year and what he did at Colorado? Oh, I was scared after that first game when he got on that uh, stand and started telling everybody, yo, yo, I feel to get comfortable. I was like, damn, man. I feel like you put in a lot of bulletin board material for these sorry ass teams that you feel be playing to go they hardest because they know y'all gonna be on tv you know everybody watching let's be real man a lot of these coaches you coaching against they totally different from you so they want to show they people this is how it's done right so i was scared so when i seen them playing and i'm looking i'm like boy this is a good story but Man, they squeaking by, man. They should be blasting off on Nebraska right now. Yeah. Arizona State, come on, big baby. Colorado State. Yeah. Hey, man, Colorado State, man. I'm up at night like, wait a minute. This guy should be over, man. Like, what's yeah. going on, man? So, I knew something was up, but I didn't see losing, like, what, eight out of the last nine? You know, I projected with the coaches in the coaches office that they was going to win two or three games this year. So for them to win four, I said three. Yeah, for them to win four was above expectations. I mean, yeah. he stayed in. He's taking over a one and eleven football team, and it's all transfers. No talent on your O line or D line. You know how football is won, especially out there in the Pac twelve. You got to have a good lineman. They didn't, and it showed week after week after week when they just gave up run pass, run pass, whatever they wanted to on defense. Well, they had um, they had a good. They left two of them after, about two or three wins after. They did. So, for it me. over exceeded my expectations is all I'm getting at. For me, as a coach, if you was a head coach, would you handle your presses like that as far as your kids, the message you're trying to relay to number one, the, the corner that's coming out that struggle, the message you're trying to relay to your offensive lineman? If I'm Deion Sanders, yeah, that's my Because you can't change who you are. Okay. Right? Because you got here with Flash, you got here with this type of. Uh, 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 not you, not that's no problem. Yeah. The so message he, you might send to the team because even with his his uh son, like Will Our Media, it feel like it's just Shador, Shiloh, Prime, and then Travis the couple Hunter. receivers, Travis Hunter. Well, who so is it? Well, what I'm saying is, <laughs> from outside looking in. I would be like, all right, do I really want to go there if it's just about them five? You yeah. get what I'm saying? No, I get it. That's what I'm saying as a recruit or something, and I'm looking from yeah. above. I'm like, wait a minute. Well, you're going to have Deion Sanders look at you and your mama in the face and tell you that you're the missing piece. Of course. They all do that. Right? So Every coach. When you hear that, that's going to hype you up. 
that's going to make you feel like. You, know, you can see it in the transfer portal this year. They got the number one class of guys trying to transfer into Colorado. That's his method. That's how he's trying to win. He's not going to try to recruit high school level. He's going to try to get the, the, the transfers, which is a smart deal in this NIL era. All the best wishes to Prime. Have you been to Boulder before? I have not. That was my papa live, my mama daddy. Yeah. Is I ain't gonna lie. I be bored up there, man. Like real talk. Like the weed be straight up there. No, that's fine. Go ahead. You oh, know. okay. Yeah, my you, man. You, okay. You didn't already say okay, that. Okay, you gotta yeah. blank me. I ain't you go he gonna blank me. He gonna he gonna do the little beat. Nope, I'm not spinning so, out of that one. I was just gonna say wrong. shit be pause. straight, you know, that's crazy. I said I put pause yeah, right yeah, after that. Yeah, but you goddamn. But I said pause right after so, that. So okay. So <laughs> if Boulder man, I say this. When he say the recruits come, if you come, pause, and you go out there, it's beautiful. The trees, the mountains, right there, everywhere. It's just beautiful. After about 10 minutes, it was like, shit, it's just mountains. Yeah. And it ain't, it, well, what you think is in Alabama? A hot sauce. Okay. Fried fish. Okay. So a little, um, what's, some, in, what's, some in, hips, what's in Old Miss? Some hips. What's in, what's some in hips. Jackson, Mississippi? What's that, Mississippi State? Uh, some ass. I get all uh, that. Uh, I'm saying like that. Uh, out there, what do you so when you're 18? No, nah, I'm with you. Uh, it's are we looking? Are we looking? At nah, like, like Jordan nah, told not you, in Boulder. Like Jordan told you, it's cheap. Not Boulder. You. Not in Boulder. Not when. Not when you get smacked on by a team. <laughs> like shit, I can look at this. I can go to USC hey, and do this hey, shit. Hey, you played on a team and got smacked in college. A did lot. It, did it stop you from t- getting, taking care of business at the end of that? Whether y'all win or lose, you was hitting cheeks regardless, right? Yeah, but it's, it's levels. Uh, hey, NIL it's, levels. It's levels. Hey, all I know is NIL the, levels too. Nickel, nickel State. Prime, shout man. out to Nickel State. Don't, don't disrespect the Nickel State. <laughs> nickel State cheeks look a little different than LSU cheeks. That's for it's, sure. It's it's hey, you, there's a difference between uh, Nickel State players and LSU Shit. players too. Hell yeah, I this see that for his head. Was like, I, it when Old Daly did came to that damn man. Speaking kill. of levels, our number two story was in boxing this year. Two crazy matches. Tank versus Garcia. And Earl uh, Spence versus Bud Crawford. Two different matches. Kind of went the same way. There's levels to it. We found out quick in Tank versus Garcia. Did you get a chance to watch that fight this year, man? I watched both of them. Okay, well, let's go with Tank and Garcia first. Give me your thoughts on Tank versus Garcia. How did that, that fight go in your mind? Well, you could just tell Garcia wasn't ready for the stage. Right. He just said, man, gets bored with whooping ass. Nah, he doesn't. Like, he, like, he could've, he look could've at his dropped throat. him, but. <laughs> look at his, look, look at a, a nigga like that don't want to do nothing but fight. Yeah, that's it. He's not the type to be like, all right. called my man Lamar after that. He looked like yeah, him. He man, that's just how it go, bro. Yeah, it's over for that. Go ahead and go to some keeping with Keeping with, uh, with fights, this ain't necessarily a fight, but a proud moment in the black history uh, department. <laughs> LSU versus Iowa, Women's College Basketball National Championship. Um, a proud moment to be black <laughs> when LSU smacked the shit out of Iowa. It wasn't close. Of course, the hype going into the game was the player of the year to me and Caitlin Clark. Yo, yeah, shout out to them Iowa yeah. white girls, though. Y'all can yeah. buy like a motherfucker. I don't care what nobody say. She is the best player in college women's college basketball. She is better than Angel Reese. I don't care who which award you give her. I think she's a better basketball player. But for the story, you had Iowa talking shit to South Carolina. Got their ass up out of there, though. Got them up out of there. Get up out of here. Up out of here. Fair and square. Talk shit to him on the way. Jaquisha, get your ass in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> All that going on. Yep. And then, uh, of course, you got Angel Reese, big shit talker, LSU, uh, the coach, uh, whatever her name is. I forgot her name. Kim something, Moki, I think. Kim Moki. Big shit talker. Louisiana Tech a legend. Whole lot of, a whole lot of, you know, a whole lot of bravado, a whole lot of charisma on the screen. And LSU came out and just smacked the shit out of Howard. Proud moment to be black at that time, uh, and it was a great time. What did you uh, think of the 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 Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese conversation, and then the game overall in itself? It just showed me like how behind 
really basically the WNBA is like I've I haven't been excited for women's basketball in a long time and it usually comes from the college game. Yeah. It's not from the professional ranks and but it it's just not, but in defense of the WNBA right here, and not just that I'm defending the WNBA, but the college basketball season is special because of the one round elimination. That that tournament, that whole setup of do or die. WNBA suck, bro. The coach, they do. It, it the does. coach makes more than the star player. That never happens. No, that's ridiculous. It sucks. That, that does. Like what you say? There's a reason why it sucks because of the talent level that's on the floor, bro. We're not watching that shit. Yeah, I ain't watching that, not shit. watching that shit. I'm, but I'm not watching but too much. Drama, com- but the drama of college basketball, the one and done, the tournament, you get beat here, it's over with. I be real. Since last year, tournament run, how many full games of LSU and Iowa have you watched this year? Oh, no. But I only that's what I'm saying. It, that no, shit I'm did. Saying, like the tournament is. No, but I'm watching. not. That's not something to get at you about. What I'm saying is, my point is, we just like. This world is still built off of racism. <laughs> we just like black versus white shit. Black we black like versus Apollo black. versus Rocky. We like black versus We black like black Stephen black. A versus fucking Skip. Yeah. Then him versus Max. Then Skip, Skip versus Skip. Shannon. Yeah. We like black versus white. It's and as fun. soon as we stop like and it like it, you <laughs> like that's what we like, man. You're that's right. all it was. Absolutely. That's right. why nobody, everybody, yo, yeah, boy, dude, but I can't wait to watch LSU and this and that. Man, we watching yeah. that fucking game. Nobody give a fuck about that shit. I know doing it Stanley was, Coach hey, South Carolina. It was, it's the Olympics, basically. It's a chance for you to ride behind your cover. See, I'm a WNBA fan back when the Cummins had Cynthia Cooper, Cheryl Swoops, you was a Tina WNBA Thompson. Fan for a cell phone. Lisa Leslie at the sport. Dan Staley playing for the Charlotte whatever blue team. Yeah. Like, what was Ter- Teresa Thompson with the dress for the New York Liberty? When she, when she the point? That's Teresa Witherspoon. And she Witherspoon. was she was a sniper at Louisiana Tech as a coach. You better grab your woman and grab her tight. Do, do it run with bike? Man. Do it run with bike? Man, and she <laughs> and she drove a Harley. Oh, shit. On my so mama. Cool. She drove it's into so the cool. gym with a Harley. I said, man, come here. Speaking of black versus white, another proud, proud, proud moment in black history in 2023. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> the Montgomery brawl. Yeah, man. Damn right. It was a proud moment for black people all over the United States of America. Yeah, man. If I had a haircut, I'd take my hat and throw it up in the air, but I don't, so you ain't getting that tonight. But, man, oh, man, you want to break this down, bro? Well, there was a man just on his job, man, security guard, just doing his job, man. Um, It was a group of white people. They was having a good time this day, just off this little pier. Like, this is our pier. The security guard said, hey, man, you got people trying to come dock. They're trying to come dock their boat. We need, hey, I know y'all drunk. Hey, yeah, great, yeah, God bless America. But say, dog, move your boat. He said, look at her, Marcus. That's not my name. He said, <laughs> well, Quincy, whatever the fuck your name is. <laughs> he He's talking. an old black man, too. Ain't no Quincy. <laughs> <laughs> fuck, Earl. Goddamn, Rufus. What, what? Like, that's what was Rufus. going on. It, it's when the security hey, guard. I'm the oldest. I'm a Martin. That's what was out there. It might have been oldest. <laughs> The security guard basically tried to do his job, man. He tried to get him up off the boat. I mean, off the dock. They get a little rough and rowdy with him. The people that's trying to dock on this other little tourist ferry, they see a black man and security guard getting tumbled up by like about what, about five white boys, six. They just start jumping on his ass. Well, she all of a sudden, man, this black folks start coming from stairs. A motherfucker oh. start swimming. <laughs> hey, no swim and gave it to him. Hey, all I know is this, man. For the first time in a long time, other than birth of a nation, maybe <laughs> <laughs> it seems like we got to better end yeah. of the stick. Cause all the other movies end with us getting sprayed and, and bit by dogs. And fucking hoes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, we go to jail for just defending ourselves. And this time, they went to jail. 
Except, except for Buddy who pushed all one on SmackDown and yeah. picked up the sure. yeah, he picked yeah. up the, SmackDown <laughs> versus Raw. It went crazy. Oh, Kathy, he gave Kathy a double cheeseburger. He oh, hit her twice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think the guy that wrestled him was black too. I yeah, think I think he's like, all right, come on, nigga, you they, can't hit him. They, was, you they was chilling. Twice. Yeah, they was chilling. They were like, all right, bro, oh, God damn, you fam, you, you why, you, why you just hit her ass? Like, you could not just steal off yeah, of her. You got to go pick the chair. kicking the back of the knee, bro. Oh, my God. That was a good time, though. I'm sorry to all my white friends, but, yo. Yeah. Hey, that was the, the best Monday morning I ever went back to work. I ain't never been more proud of walking uh, hey, the man, we, we finally was I, together. Hey, I smiled from cheek to cheek. I was just waiting on somebody to bring it up. I man. wish one of y'all would bring it up. Because in real life, man, to not serious shit out, man, if they didn't have them people on their side, that shit would go like that 10 out of 10 times. Yeah. Like 10 out of 10. It just would. Like that's just how it would go. But they got them people on the side, so you got to be like, eh. They get to shoot you sometime when yeah. they think you got a hoodie on with your Skittles. You get away. It's an autograph. I have autograph sessions. Yeah, nah, they love them. That shit is wild. So... That was a proud, proud moment for black people. And then this one could be a sad or happy, just depending on how you feel and view about Sexy Red. Sexy Red took over 2023 early with Pound Town. And as much as I tried not to like that song, I couldn't, I, I, I quit fighting it. That shit was hard. That shit, pause. That shit was great. It was a great song. Hey, man, keep it moving. Stop looking at the camera like that. Baby. That is crazy. Keep it moving. Oh, yeah. shit. Downtown was a, was a great moment. Nah, we moving on. Nah, no, we moving on. It go crazy. It was a, it was a great moment. In 2023, Coach. we all know what color her coochie is, and we Coach. all know what color her booty hole is. Uh, Coach got then, a simple dab. And then we went from Pound Town to Ski. With Ski, it was a good moment. Uh, it was another a song that, you know, in the right environment can go up. Um, and then, of course, you just had more of, like, the Sexy Red Sex Tape to drop, uh, which was six, four out of ten. Like, come on. Like, spit stuff. I'm not even going to get into it. But, yeah, the, the Sexy Red Sex Tape was, eh. Then she get pregnant. And it's like, eh, you still dancing around. Now you talking about Free My Baby Daddy in jail. The video. Do you and like the song with her and your boy? Who's my boy? Drake. Yo, I do actually. The song they play a hundred million times, they going to force on you on the radio? I don't, I don't. See, I control what I listen to, so I don't have to hear it a hundred million times. But uh, It's just that it as soon catchy. as I turn my car it on, it's going to be. It was, it was, it's a catchy song. Uh, I understand why they did it. It made sense at the time. Is it one of his greatest songs ever? No. But it was a catchy little moment. It's part of this, you know, the sexy red hype, hype train. That he, he'll get on any train, you know what I'm saying? He'll get on whatever trend for 2023 or whatever the year is. I think what what happens with these women in this this rap culture is you go from Nicki Minaj to where it get a little bit more glammy than Cardi B was the opposite, but right. still kind of hood with it. Then she got a little more glamorous. Then here come Glorilla with the... You know what I'm saying? You know, she had the hit of the year last year. Right, right. And then here she come with it. She over the top with it. Yeah. And now, after a while, though, I think people starting to be like, eh. Hey, like, like. You know that's going to fizz out? Yeah, that's going to fizz if out. it's not already fizz Somebody out. like Mulatto that told that line. Uh, What's her name? Is it Big Lotto? Big Lotto, yeah. She told that line. She going to always be able to Isn't throw out a hit. what she looked like, though. Who? Sexy Red. She ugly. Let's keep it a whole book. She's not cute. She's right? a tough look. Uh, if she was fine, the receptive would be way more receptive of her, right? Like she would have longer in the game. All she gotta do, man, we don't see ugly or turn herself Ooh. around. A little surgery will help that shit out. Nigga, do you remember what Cardi mean, B used to look like? No, 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 I get that, I get that, but you know, boy, shit, no, nah, god that. damn. But you gotta think about this colorism. Nicki Minaj, it's, it's colorism in this too now, because you gotta think about it. Shit, those are two light skinned mm -hmm. women, and we all, I don't care how people, you she know, do look like young thugs. You know what I'm saying? Like this heifer is ugly. It ain't enough. It ain't enough. It ain't it colorism ugly. for me though, because nah, I don't but she know. ugly though. Let, uh, let's keep it a buck. If, if she was somewhat cute. We would be a little bit more receptive of what she was doing. Some of these niggas low key like that shit. 
They love that shit. Yeah, some don't don't live here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't for, live here. For real. A wild, wild, wild year for Sexy Red. But, you know, congratulations to her. Hopefully she can find that magic that was with Pound Town. Uh, get back to making songs that sound a little bit more like that than some of this other bullshit she's been coming out with. What do you feel about men that, like, do the, the, um, I understand liking the song. I understand you want to do the ski shit. That's cool. Not me. I don't like shit like that. Honestly. But how do you feel when you start seeing men that's in groups, like in locker rooms, singing ski and shit? Do they get a little weird? Like, what? It was a little weird when I saw the jazz. Blast it just feel it. like us men are starting to get like. Well, it's been that way. We've it, been, it's, it's like, been are we changing the men role getting for sassy. Real? In 2023, yes, they're open about being sassy and having an attitude. Uh, Every dance is a little, it's hippie it's motion. Hippie it got, motion. it's all but, I mean, but at the same time, dances back then were hippie. Like if you dance, you use your hips. Like it's just uh, it's, it's a certain it's, way, man. It's a little fruity. Yeah, man. It's man. a little fruity in these streets. Yeah, man. Like but the Harlem Shake is way Harlem. different type of shake than that that little. Uzi but okay, shake. but I'm gonna say this: the kids set the culture, right? The Sometimes. kids, the kids are the trend pushers. They set the culture. The youth sets the culture, and with the way these kids have grown up, with what's being cool, what's not cool, what's gay, what's not gay. You wanna know what's, what's crazy though? What's not acceptable. The kids, but there's think of it. There's not too many young rappers out that really, like, there ain't too many young rappers out that really run this shit like that. It used to be a Lil Wayne and then a Drake and then a 50 Cent or... Yeah, but that's because it's the microwave. This is the like, microwave. I don't uh, even, I can't even think of one but NBA Youngboy that yeah, and he's falling off. Lil Baby out. fell off. Lil Baby was supposed to be that guy and he fell off. You know and he's I mean? older. Yeah. Like, I'm talking about, like, it's still, like, even though it's for the kids, it's still the Drakes, the J. Coles, the Kendricks, Nicki well, Minaj. Cream, what it, uh, pause, but Cream always rises to the, cup, to, to the top, right? That's the same. The, 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 the best are always going to get to the top. They're going to find a way to stay on top because they are the best. And that's always been how it's always been. And I think with when you look at a Drake, Cole, Kendrick, not even Kendrick this year, but when you look at the, the names that keep – popping up year after year after year. Mm -hmm. When they started, they were young. Like, Drake was like 21 when he first started. Now he's 36, 37. Like, he's still in the prime of his life. Still supposed to be working. Still supposed to be making music. And I think that's why their reign and their run has lasted as long as it has. Uh, but, you know, with the sassy stuff and all the, you know, I think that's just, that's what the kids know. The kids set the culture in that sense of it. If, if there was uh, older people that set the culture and set the generation, things wouldn't be getting sassier. Things would be getting more serious, right? Can I do... Spe speaking of things getting sassier... I was just going to say, hey, yeah. I, can, I do, can I do this? Go for it, man. Hey, Go hey, for it, man. I just want to do this segue. Hey, I know. I see you. I see you. I see, I see you. 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 Hey, hey man! Hey man! man. Pill Diddy! <laughs> Pill Diddy! Pill Diddy! Pill Diddy! Pill Diddy! Pill Diddy! Now we already seen what happened Number to six. You. your Kim Fo Cosby. We seen what happened to your boy Kelly. Yeah. The Pied Piper is what he had called this still. Man, that's crazy. So Diddy, man, Diddy's had a rough go in at this end of the year, man. man. After such, let me get the positives out. After such a great album, man, the Love album. I know you're not an R&B fan, so I got to get this in while I can. The Love album, Off the Grid, was incredible. Jockey, Jasmine Sullivan, Kehlani. I mean, it's just uh, Jazzy. Incredible records on that album. I hate it. it has to be overshadowed by this, but go ahead, bro. I'm through. I'm out. That shit sounds like a rainy day, man. I don't want to hear this what I shit. Tell you, you got a this nigga bound, name. Man. This nigga hey, name. You got a hell bound, no, he's hell bad. He is. He is. He's <laughs> he, somebody else. He talk about he love. 
That nigga ain't love, man. Everybody that always got to tell you who they are, remember they the opposite. Bro, he trying to cover it up. Every time somebody say they a real nigga, I'm a real nigga, I'm a real nigga, they are the opposite. Mm -hmm. If you got to tell somebody what you are, you are the opposite. So, when he started that love shit, you know what happened. He started, he, somebody back, Cassie won like, this little demon, devilish ass nigga. Done got away with this shit. Now he get to be with the little girl again. He recycling. He going back making babies while he with the side. Keep her. Have her get show podcast of the year with three shows a year. Just wow. power. Just just elbows on everybody. Yeah. Nah, hold up, man. Nah, 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 nah. Not this way. We have a ruling coming in that says, man, y'all got to shit. This certain time to file some shit. If not, that nigga gonna be gone out y'all way and y'all ain't never gonna be able to say nothing. Well, she, she started that shit off. That nigga settled in a day or some shit. In a day. And then the ball starts rolling like anything else, man. Just like anything else. And like once one person starts saying something, if everybody else don't like you already, shit. Look, we here. So I have a question. How much sympathy do you have for Cassie? was watching these people pee on her. Like, it's hard for me, bro. When y'all hear these, when you hear these stories, bro. When I, hear I got sympathy for her. On, I got sympathy for her. But it's like. Hey, man, power is power. I understand power is power, but you also are choosing to repeatedly put yourself then why in hasn't, positions. My point is, he obviously is good at molding young women brain. Because why is it? Well, we all got that ability. Well, well, for me, I always think of it like this. As simple as this. Everybody looked at him as, man, that's P. Diddy. He's so player. I never did. You're not player to me if you always got look young girls that you fuck with. Right. What about that grown woman that know who the fuck you is? Yeah. Know your history? Yeah. Know what the fuck you doing? And nigga, I'm still gonna rock with you because I fuck with what you are right now. That's some regular shit. You but you putting regular expectations on people. That's not regular. He has not lived. That's not regular. regular. You know why? It's not, fam. How how is that not regular? I can't tell a grown man to go fuck with grown women instead of molding little girls' minds all the time. I think that's I mean, not that's no. not that's some regular shit. Not to I know plenty not, of men not to, not that's to, famous that not fuck to with serious yourself. But a rich man, it's harder to find. Fabulous a, just pulled up with another fine. Fabulous ain't Diddy. Diddy got money, money. What right? they got to do with the age? I know, but I'm, tell, I'm telling you, bro, when you got that kind of money. The hell you, you a fine grown woman? You got, no, but you don't think like that. Man, hell you nah, don't, bro. Don't think that sounds like creepy. It, it is creepy. That's why he's in the position that he's in. Mm -mm. I, he's, he's not the only in. He's not the only nigga that's with power that... that Nah, fam. He is a creep. We we got we got LeBron. Nigga is a billion while he playing. Yeah. Come on, fam. Like it's people, and he's younger than him. It's people that has been out here that's been getting money that does not creep. You have Swiss beats out here, nigga. Buku money. Nigga got a fucking he got a fucking skating ring and, in this shit. You, Swiss beats ain't got two pennies compared to Diddy. Okay, bro. Okay, I'm bro. You, I'm well, you, you can say that, but you did You were you were quiet when I said LeBron. LeBron is different, man. You know okay, then. So, but then we can go. That's we can go down the bed. That's, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's so, that's so, sure. so don't get quiet on LeBron. No, then no, I say Swiss B. Well, he ain't got. All money. I'm saying is this: when we talk about somebody with billions of dollars who has nobody, then have a billion of grown bro, women. But Nice Burgos is a fine ass forty year old. The you can't. No, his mind is fucked up. Yeah, he's I'm not playing. I'm with you. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, he's he's not, not a player. player. He's, he's not. not player, it's just a whole scheme, nigga. It's that money. That's not it's, play. It's that's creep. not player. But it's, it's like creep. People with money don't go for things that have resistance. You I can't at, wait till Mo you come back. Look at uh, Kodak, okay, and this is a completely different situation. But Kodak's drug use in 2023, you can even hear it on the music. The boy is going through it. Like his drug use and what he's using and how he's using it is going through the roof. It's not the same. Like he don't sound the same no more. Like you listen to pistols niggas and just pearls. Need to, niggas just need to eat. But it's cool. But you look at pistols and pearls and you go back and listen to some of his older music. He's slurring. He don't care about him slurring. 
He telling you he fucked up. He telling you what he fucked up on. Like to me, that is anything. And this is not the same situation. But it's like the same because there's people around Kodak should be saying, "Hey, bro, maybe you don't need to put coke in your blood. Maybe you don't need to do this X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. Maybe you're killing yourself. Maybe you should start living a better lifestyle." But that's resistance to what he wants, right? So anybody that's offering any kind of resistance to the lifestyle that I want to live, I don't got time for. I don't listen to you get cut off. So when you take that mindset, right, and you apply it to a guy like Diddy who's been doing what the fuck he wants since 1990, right, 30 years of that, that's how you get to a point where I don't want an older woman because an older woman not going to put up with that shit. Well, right? of course, that's I know that. No, that's all I'm saying. Like, it's, it's all about... Who? What? What's the least pass for resistance? That's a weenie, though. No, man. it is. I'm not. I don't think Diddy is playing for no, yeah, no like, means in my after mind. After Cassie, do I think the Cassie shit was always weird to me. But then when I start seeing like, okay, like every, I don't have a problem with a nigga fucking with a younger woman. Like my daddy was forty and my mama was thirty three when they had me. That's seven years, man. It could be ten years when you at them That's ages. Different. That's That's, yeah. I get it. But my nigga, have something your age. Like, that's the thing I be thinking. Like, it's cool to have three or four. Do your three or four. But have something your age. Because you know what happens? Guess what happens? What happens with all these niggas? What happened with him? She's going to see something younger. Yeah. It don't matter how much money you have, buddy. Right. Right. You are getting old, buddy. Yeah. I'm with this younger nigga with less money than you. Just right. like you said, Swiss Beats ain't got two pennies to tell him. Yeah. It don't matter to a female out the way. They don't got all no, they I'm need out that. of you, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm hey, bro, 100 million and 50 million ain't too much different when you in them type leagues with them now, people, this is bro. the lighter scale of the conversation. Let's get into the dirty shit. Mm-hmm. What's this shit with T.D. Jakes, bro? I just heard that nigga was getting was at his party. They said, they said <laughs> my nigga T.D. Chase, and he ain't my nigga no more, but he is a power bottle. What is that? <laughs> what is that? What do you think a power bottom is, fam? I know what a bottom is. Yeah. What is the power and part? And it's gay. Yeah, I know uh, the, I know the top bottom. A power bottom would be describing gay sex. Exactly. I'm not, I can't. I I'm can't. not going to get into it on the mic because I actually want to put this episode out. Oh. So I'm not going to tell you exactly what it is. But they said T.D. Jakes is at Diddy's parties going gorilla. What the fuck? Oh, no. <laughs> not T.D., man. Yeah, T.D. Jakes, bro. They said T.D. Jakes, which to me was a surprise because, damn, it's the church. And I hate when the church take black eyes, man. Like for as a person that grew up, it's in out church, of means, fool. <clears throat> but damn, they killing him on Twitter and every part of it is. It's amazing, out of means, fool. It's that swallowing <laughs> meme that they be throwing out. There. That shit is crazy. I said, man, this nigga going crazy. Oh my god! I heard, nah, they went to. I heard on Joe Budden podcast. I think today they was yeah, they man, played they this the, shit. Yeah, bro. It's oh been, my goodness! It's been in my group chat for, uh, this week, especially. When the T.D. Jakes knew, uh, broke out that he's at Diddy's parties and he's one of these people that's getting rammed up and uh, this is how he got his millions and mega millions and church and followings. Diddy is a really, really freaky man. This is wild, man. Like, at what point? Why, we I, did, I just want to know, when did regular sex not become enough? I couldn't do it to my girl. Hey, order you some BBCs and I'm going to watch. Bro. No, I gotta get at back what, in there. At what state? <laughs> <laughs> at what point? How much money do you have to have with regular yeah, sex? Keep my money? confidence up, man. No, no. no what is I that? wanna make enough money to where regular sex is still enough for me. <laughs> because some of these boys got some money where regular sex just ain't enough. Nah, it's always gonna be enough for me. Just like I ain't never did nothing more than just, a give me, downer. Give me right to that point. Man. Like, I done been around people on them uppers, and they look like they having a hell of a night. But I just cannot see myself, my mind moving that fast. So I'm going to always do my downers. I'm just going to always stay. You will never catch me with nothing on my burger but meat and cheese. I'm a simple nigga, man. Going from one courtroom to the next. Head ass. Gunner. What a year, 2023. What an album, too. What an album, what a year. Um, 
Gonna let's go break down. 2022 put out a fantastic album, right? Yep. Pushing P, he was the top guy in the world. Looked like Gunner was finna take that spot from a lot of people as a new hot young artist. Mm-hmm. And then YSL goes to jail. Mm-hmm. The whole YSL clique ends up in jail. Mm-hmm. And uh, they spend the whole year in jail. And then in early 2023, Gunner took the stand and said that YSL is a gang. Mm-hmm. And he knew he was a member. He was not a member of the gang, but. He knew that they did criminal activities, said it out loud, made a statement, and he is now the snitch of the year. Mm-hmm. All right? So what does he do? Put his head down, got in the lab with whoever would work with him, which this is the most amazing part of the story. No features on the album. Mm-mm. No taglines from any producers. No Metro. No none of that. And then he comes up with an album with about seven or eight absolute slaps on it out of probably 12 or 13 records. Come out with uh, Bread and Butter, which was the perfect comeback single I've ever heard in my life. Like, how do you come back and gun them when you got that kind of talent, when you got that kind of melodic... Uh, some melodic capping. When you got some melodic talent, man. It was a lot of melodic capping. Yeah, and, and that's just been his whole career. Yeah, it's just a lot of, how could you think I wasn't going to, I've been loyal. It's just been there, but it sounds good. <laughs> it but it was great. just a lot of... Melodic capping. Then he had probably one of the top records of the year. And fuck you, man. QP Ski. Tore every club up. Uh, even that song people, grew on me. Bro, when people, pause, but when people was, uh, you know, not listening to Gunner, they would play Gunner in the clubs and nobody would move. He drops his album, Fuck You Me, comes on, and nobody gave a damn about him having being a rat, cheese, none of that bullshit, right? People just turned up. Sum up Gunner's year, in your opinion. What kind of a year did this man have, and uh, you know, what did you think of the album and and all that other shit? Well, for me, uh, some things your career will never be the same. So forever now, he's gonna have to really focus on being just an artist. Yeah, he'll never. You already got by. You was already on Crime Stoppers before, bro. So you was already on Crime Stoppers once. So now for this one. You know, it's just, it really show you what they mean by, like, some of these rappers are just really entertainers. And they are. Yeah, that's all of them. And that's fine. I like I like going to music. I still listen to it. I don't, I'm not that invested in that shit like I see some people. Sometimes <coughs> you see people trying to talk about it to make it look like they know this, this, this shit so good. This court shit and street shit and... So they know what to do and what who said this and what is this and what fed case. Trust me, I know. And sometimes I'll be like, ah, 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 shut the fuck up. Yeah. Talking about shit. That's just this world, though, man. This is true. It's a great year for Gunner, yeah? Yeah, I say it's a great year for Gunner. I want to see where he go from there. He got sold out shows. He's, but I just want to see. He's starting to see people start fucking with him a little bit. Mm. Who's gonna be that first artist to get on on on, on the feature with? Him? Not that you would. You think so? Offset. That is. Uh, Offset is another type gunner type dude. You got. He's not really the type. If you notice that, really like he he's a roamer. Yeah. He'll be in L. A. doing this and this in New York and this. Like he not really with that straight with Atlanta scene because he was into it with little baby. Yeah. And little baby got all of Atlanta, right? So he he seen how Quavo and them did him. So it's yeah. kind of like, eh. well, you know, you know, Offset think he Michael Jackson, so he's trying to branch out into that. And it's a smart he move. Grew on me. It's a it's a smart move because you know rap is always so limited. That's you know, crazy. Can, what's that? Did you, you grow on? Did you grow on? That he grew on me. <laughs> yeah, I heard it. Yeah. I wasn't gonna make a big deal out of it. Yeah, he rock on. Yeah, but uh. Not gonna have a great year. Overseeded ex- expectations for me for sure. Uh, Bread and butter was was an incredible record. Fucking mean rodeo. Autumn songs. Back to the moon. Really good. Mo- uh, really good album for Gunner. Way to get back on his feet. He actually, uh, you know, got a record called Bachelor with Turbo. Uh, uh, somebody that wasn't afraid to put their name, you know, back attached with his. So it'd be interesting to see what twenty twenty four look for. Him. Uh, recently, John ja Morant played in his first basketball game of the season. After a 25-game suspension, 
for a, a multitude of things, right? Ja had a hell of a 2023. Uh, flashing a gun on Instagram live in the strip club, which I can see that. You young, it happens. Memphis, it happens. You drunk, you got a bunch of money, bad bitches around you, you flash your gun. You do, you it's part of the culture there. It, it makes sense. The richest person in Memphis. Makes sense. The richest person. I was cool with that. The flash and the gun in the car on live, what are we doing, bro? It and look, I think it look weird. And I think that's what that on top of punching a seventeen year old in two thousand twenty two. And I think those two live incidents what got this man to a twenty five game suspension. In the Jalen Rose interview and then do awkward it. man. <laughs> six six, seven games later. <laughs> yeah, and I'm sitting there like, damn, Jalen. I know you told him, hey, this is what we gonna ask you. This is what we gonna tell you. You say this. Come on, I've been through this. This is how we gonna get through it. Hey, how fuck. much of that? Yeah, I've I always had a, que- uh, a question. How much of that is Jalen trying to attach himself to a situation, trying to be popular in the moment, or how much of that was genuine intrigue, genuine interest, reaching out with his heart? I think Jalen really cared because Jalen was already on the outskirts of getting out of ESPN. Yeah. You could tell by Jalen and Jacoby, which was one of my favorite shows. Right. They stopped playing it. He wasn't in rotation really no more on the ESPN shows. He wasn't really on Get Up that much anymore. So you could tell they was kind of sliding them out. So when he did that, I was like, that ain't to be in front of nobody. Yeah. That's because he really curled. Okay. That's why I feel like. So Jai with the 25-game suspension has messed up his chances of being All-NBA which is going to mess up his bread at the end of the day because with no postseason awards like All-NBA or MVP or anything like that, right? he can't get to that super max level of his contract. Uh, so this is a good punishment for him. I think being in court the other day was good for him. Like, and, and here's why. And here's why. You play stupid games, what kind of prize are you going to win? You're going to win a stupid prize. <laughs> yeah, when he tra- yeah, like there was nothing more embarrassing than you having to explain why you punched a seventeen year old during a, a pickup game. Now I'm not judging you for punching a seventeen year old. Seventeen year old hits you in the ball with the face. He pull his shorts up, back like he's gonna do something to you. I understand that completely, right? But you are, you know how stupid that sounds to an NBA point guard. Like, and and if you didn't think it was stupid, all right, Adam Silver, Adam Silver, said, I got you. Explain this shit in front of everybody. How they get out? This world, boy. I don't even know how they would get out. What's that? Him and that boy. Oh, the boy told. What you mean? The NBA player punched me. I'm finna get paid. Oh. Yeah, he told. Should press charges, all that shit. That's why he in court, like, because the kid told. Which the kid should. Even if the kid did provoke the incident, you as the adult, you with the millions of dollars, have to be smarter than to go off and steal off on a kid. Go out with millions on TV, signature shoe, Nike, all this good stuff going on in your life, and you punching on seventeen year olds. What you think about that picture they be showing? They always show his little kid picture with him and his family and stuff. Like I was that. trying to say he ain't street. I, uh, I don't get it. I don't. I understand. I think it's jokes. I think it's internet jokes. I he think did look. He did look awfully weeny. Yeah, I, I think it's internet jokes. I think people getting fun. the opportunity to be comedians. Anytime anybody can be a comedian online, you see this with the T.D. Jake stuff. Like anytime we get a chance to be funny, we're gonna be funny online. I think because that look a lot of times growing up, you don't see too many pictures with the mama, daddy, kid, kid type shit. No, nah, you see that, too many households like that. Like when you see that, you automatically think not corniness. You think, well, you good. Right. Yeah, like sure, that, true, it was cool. It. Like you were the thug, you had your mama and your. Why are you being home? like that now? This right. shit ain't fun. Like no, what but, the fuck is like? That's why I always try to be different. And bro. I think that's why people call this pops out because yeah. you know a lot of people call this pops out trying to be like more than his friend. Need you to be a leader. Need you to be you know guiding. Like, act like in the right act like you fucking uh. Your fucking uh, act teammate. like it's fifty million dollars on the line. Act right? like your teammate Ray Allen and a hey, UConn. What are you supposed to do? <laughs> hey, I might zoom in on you taking a drink because that might have been the fucking shit. I didn't see you know? <laughs> Oh my fucking god! <laughs> hey, hey if anybody, like, anybody <laughs> looking for real? <laughs> hey, you looking at a nigga that is on five <laughs> percent? <laughs> 
Speaking of the NBA, <laughs> story nine, I think with the NBA playoffs this past year in 2023, uh, not so much the Denver Nuggets, even though they won the title and one of the most boring finals of all time. But I think when you look at the playoff series, uh, and I think it's because of the King and because of the L.A. Lakers. Like, they were the most fascinating team of the NBA playoffs. Uh, we got swept. LeBron was finally back in the playoffs, which is a big deal. We got swept. Um, started with the five-game win against Memphis, which was lit. Yeah. I remember, uh, you know, Austin Reeves. I'm him. That was a great moment for Austin Reeves. Uh, beating Memphis. Dylan Brooks versus LeBron. That was a great storyline. There was drama all throughout that. Uh, I think you look at Sacramento and Golden State. Hell of a seven game series. Uh, Golden State looking like they're finna fall apart at any moment, but, you know, hell true. Face the Lakers got beat in that series. You no, know, it was real good to be a Laker fan, real good to be a LeBron fan for about three weeks there. It was real, real, real positive until the Denver Nuggets came in. I time. had no hope. <laughs> Why? We got AD on the team. Okay. Uh, hey, I, I got out of hope. I got out of faith in LeBron. Wow. I got out of faith in LeBron. I just think Kobe is a better basketball player. That's fine, man. I just got, I got out of faith. I got out of faith. I just think Jordan and Kobe are better basketball players. That don't mean that nigga ain't the shit. Yeah. Like, LeBron is that man. But we got AD. And AD going to give you 40 and 20. He go back door and give you 13. Yeah, like, <laughs> he be like, how did that happen? Like, it's the same team you just played, bro. The same players. How? Not for real. It's just, I can't. So, once we got to the Jokic and them, what's a well doing machine? You got Michael Porter over there. You got fucking Bruce Brown Murray. doing his fucking hustling. Him and Jokic doing they pick and roll. You got motherfucking Ryan Braun coming off the fucking bench playing hard. hard man. You got man, fucking impressive. Aaron Gordon fucking out his mind playing. Yeah. It's just you got fucking. Big suited. You got fucking DeAndre Jordan for some fouls to back Bruce up. Bruce Brown him. playing play great basketball. You got goddamn me uh, uh, Jeff Green for some good minutes. did. You got some great minutes out there. Goddamn, man. like shit. You got nigga used to play for the Clippers out there with the Yank. The nigga be yeah, yeah, yeah. juicing Reggie Jackson. Reggie yeah. Jackson. Yeah, yeah, it's like, team. man, what the fuck we going to do with them? Hey, boy. What hey. about over in the East where you had uh, Hemi Butler, man? Jimmy went on an all-time run in the East, one of the best runs in the East, coming from a uh, play-in position, winning that play-in spot. They lost the first game, then they won the second game, I think. I hate they when from, the Heat make it. Why? Why, why, why you don't like Heat culture, man? Why you don't I like don't, that, that Nobody want to see that gritty-ass, tough – Good, whole good story basketball. Nigga, you're not finna do shit when we get to the big boys at the end. You can't do shit. You're gonna be too tired because y'all done played seven game series. For three in a row. For three in a row. Three 21. B- b- fucking overtime games. Niggas hurt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, if I tell y'all get here, it's just a good story again. Y'all could have just yeah. let the team y'all beat before this let get here. Yeah, you know so we can get a real series, nah, man. Real. Get out the way with that shit. <laughs> like, move, nigga. Uh, the party pooper roll is what they play. Yeah, uh, man. I get away. tired of the heat. Like, I don't <laughs> want to see this shit. You know, it's, they are so limited. That ceiling is set so low. But it's so high at the same time. Because in real life, man, what make Eric supposed to, like, like, he a great coach, but they be, they be acting like this nigga, like, Phil Jackson type shit. Like, Red Arbach, because he... Pop. Like, nigga, he, he had LeBron, D-Wade, and Chris Bosh. Yeah. And he got a loyal Pat Riley that ain't going to fire him. That's why his job is there. He hasn't been won there a so championship. Long. I don't care how good, how how far he take a team. You said long, nigga. I don't <laughs> think so, but I knew I was going somewhere was crazy. Freaky. Yeah, I was getting freaky. Hey, was I was going somewhere freaky, and I had to, I had to go yeah, to Detroit. You cleaned it up. I yeah, saw it in your eyes. I was like, yeah, 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 come yeah, back, yeah, come yeah. back, come back. I went somewhere freaky. Yeah, I went crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. So the playoffs were cool. The, Of course, Joker, who is, I think we got to talk about it, one of the greatest big men of all time. Uh, With his play style, with his, you know, his efficiency, his usage, 
You talk about the triple doubles. You talk about somebody that's you've no, never seen. You've never seen a center really direct an offense the way this is going on. So who you you got him over Shaq? Not yet. Okay. Not yet. You got him over Will. Yeah. You got him over Bill Russell. Uh, no, nah, it's unfair to put him over Bill Russell. Hakeem Olajuwon. Yeah, I do. I do. I actually do. I think the way that he plays offense, I think the way that he controls so much of the tempo, the flow of the game. I mean, he's really Jason Kidd at 6'9", 6'10". He's really uh, Luka Doncic at 6'10", 6'11", 280. Like, he's really controlling every aspect of the Denver Nuggets offense and has been doing it for a very the long time. The championship helps him a lot. Yeah, but, I mean, it's proof in the pudding, like, He's been playing this way for a very long time. And because he never won the championship, nobody took him serious. I think the way it's they the dismantled style. the Lakers. It's just it, the yeah, style. Yeah, no, for sure. But just because it's not an appeasing style don't mean it's not effective. That's what I'm – nah, I know what you're saying. Yeah. I'm saying, but that's why people – Oh, no, for sure. I, like, I you look at it, it's just like eh. – It's not an appeasing style. Nobody – It's the Patriots. Like, yeah. like, they won five, so it. Yeah. Like, the – Time so, won five. I yeah. Yeah, cause whoa, they suck. Damn Zeke, damn Zeke, you Zeke, gotta go yeah, back to the. To be you here. gotta go back to our next subject. You gotta go back to our next subject. And with that, the number ten story on our list are the Dallas Cowboys. Who else? Both two Cowboy fans, proud Cowboy fans. Goddamn right. right, we're gonna win this year and the next year and the next year. Uh, let's talk about it, man. Dallas, to start of the year off. Man, I was feeling great about it, man. They beat Tampa Bay at Tampa Bay. Sent Tom Brady on his way home. Mm -hmm. Sent them boys packing. Defense played well. Mm -hmm. And then we got to Kryptonite, which is the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, And Dak played like ass. I don't know how else to put it. Defense played well enough for us to win the game. Limited that team to, I think, 17 points or something like that. He's been our starting quarterback for eight years. Has been. Uh, how many of those years have you been impressed with? Majority. Okay. Until. So now it's 2023, so we can't talk about A few of them playoff season. games, it's just Aaron Rodgers throwing crazy no, ass passes. Sure. But that's rookie year, though. It's the second, it's the other year, too, when they played him at the Dallas Cowboys, threw it to the sideline to their Hit the tight, tight end. end. That was a rookie year. That was that was sixteen. Not a, well, what's the second year, the year after that then, when they played again and he beat him? He beat them two years in a row. Did he? I don't remember the second year. Yeah, he beat them two years in a I, row. I always remember the Dez drop, and then I remember the – That's Tony and them. Yeah, yeah but I remember that one. fucking real. Yeah, still that's mad ridiculous. About that's, that's still bad. But anyway, man. The 2023 Cowboys, yeah. Dak played like ass uh, in the, the San Francisco game. And then the regular season has started off well for us. Uh, be beating the teams we're supposed to beat, and then you know beat the Philadelphia Eagles, and then lose to the Bills out of nowhere last Sunday. Uh, what's your prospectus on on this 2023-24 playoff run that we're gonna get out of Dallas? I feel like that um, it's good that they being counted out right now. It's good that they're being looked at as other teams' little brothers to give them a little motivation to right. maybe. Maybe play a little bit different. Um, I don't think our defense is built for a cold playoff game outdoors. It doesn't look like it. Man. It always feels like we've been a finesse team. I don't think them boys wanted to be out there in Buffalo, man. I don't think anybody did. No parts of that. It don't – you could just tell, like, our team just don't play that well when it's like an outdoor game. Like, when it's cold – when it's like the elements ain't great, it feel like we always struggle a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like that's what the playoffs are. Like they're cold games. Like a lot of northern teams, like a lot of outdoor stadiums. Like that's just what it is. So I'm scared, but I'm also kinda intrigued. I gotta see where we file in the tournament because I feel like we can't lose to the 49ers like four, 
five straight times. Sooner or later, you got to get them. That's what I feel like. Just like I thought Jalen Hurts and them were finna go on a run on us. Right. And we, ah. Right. Hit their ass in the mouth. Right. We can do that to them, man. It can happen. We can do that to them. It, it can like, happen. I don't know if it will. I'm not confident. Ben Quinn, you going to have to get up. Like, he going to have to get through with Cal Shanahan because right now he's out scheming him. All the time. But uh, in, in Dan Quinn's defense, he ain't getting no help on the other side of the ball whenever they play San Fran. God damn, Lawrence, you got to hit him in the mouth again and again over, and over, again. And over. Man, yeah. you can't do all this shit talking and get y'all ass. You just can't be that guy, man. Well, nigga ain't did shit since Hard Knocks. The year they, they had Hard Knocks. They paid him. You know what time they mean? paid him. When, they paid they, when you try to get that contract, yeah, he yeah. ain't did shit. Hey, once you paid me, you done paid me. I done earned that. Damn, fool. But tell me this. 